Hi everyone, for those of you who are new to this channel, I'm Andrew Hoffman. I'm a security architect and technical author. I write books on application security, which is a subdomain in cybersecurity or information security focused on the interactions between software engineering and cybersecurity. So looking at issues that can occur at the code level. Today, I wanted to talk a little bit about clickjacking. By the end of this video, I'm gonna walk you through some very easy clickjacking payloads, teach you how to take over websites for testing purposes, steal user input, trick users into doing things they don't want to do. And I'm gonna explain to you why this is still a big issue on the web and a little bit about what you can do to prevent your users from being vulnerable to clickjacking. So let's get started. Now you can see on the left hand side, I have this demo web application I built. It's called Demo Bank Web Application Web Page. It's actually pretty simple. If you click the button, click to initiate transfer, as of right now, it performs a function call, pops up an alert, says it's transferring funds. Now if we jump over, we can see this is legit.html, very simple application, button on click. The on click, whenever this is clicked, calls the JavaScript function transfer, pops up that alert. But in a real application, this would be real functionality that does real things like changing privacy, sharing settings, submitting or changing some type of functionality or setting in an admin user interface. The idea behind clickjacking is that on the web, when you bootstrap a tab, when you bootstrap a page, what you're doing is you're spawning these DOM nodes, these DOM elements, JavaScript interpreter, you're bundling it all up. Well, it turns out that by making use of an iframe, as we can see on malicious.html, you can spawn in another web page inside of your own web page. Now, where does, where does click checking become an exploit? It's not the fact that you're spawning in an iframe with someone else's web page. It's the fact that the way the browser security model around iframes works is it focuses in on isolating your code and doesn't really do a lot in terms of isolating your user interface. That's why click jacking is still a big deal and why a lot of applications are still affected. Let's go a little bit deeper. We have an iframe here with 100% height 100% frame border zero. You can see it's a full page iframe. You'll note that the demo bank application here is being spawned from this page. We can actually see if we inspect the page and we go down here to the iframe that this, this data in the back is not duplicated. It is in fact coming from a different website. So our website is spawning in another website inside of an iframe inside of it. This demo bank application here has the button. It still works. Click transferring funds. One of the issues with click jacking is the way that the browser security model works is that any iframe is still going to have access to the cookies of that domain. So if you have a session, for example, that session, if you can trick a user into clicking a button while they're logged in, you can perform authenticated actions on behalf of the user. Well, how would you do that in this case? It's pretty obvious that we're framing in this application. We can do a couple of things. First of all, we have this button click here. We're going to move it as close as we can using CSS on top of the button in the frame behind it. So the overlay is going to perfectly wrap the frame. This is where a little bit of CSS comes in. But what we'll do is we'll just say top, maybe 120 pixels. That'll get us closer. As you can see, it's, it's really close right now. And uh, in fact, we could get it perfect, I believe, if we go to about 110. And the really good clickjacking attack websites, you know, they get this perfect. I'm not advocating for clickjacking because as a blue teamer, I'm always here advocating for you to write more secure websites. But you know, the advantage is if someone isn't good at CSS, it might actually be visible to the end user. Unfortunately, that's not always the case. So we try clicking this button right here, the button in the overlay trick link. You can see it's actually a span and it's just uh, inflated a little bit with background color and such. Nothing happens. So the first thing we need to do before we can, can we can trick this end user into uh, performing authenticated actions and such on our behalf is we need to actually get this click through functionality working. So if we think about the browser DOM model, if we right click and we inspect right here, what we'll notice is that we have this span and it's inside of overlay span right here. When you click on any element in the HTML DOM, it creates an event. So this event will be called click and you can create a handler for these events. So you could create a handler in the DOM called on click and you could do a function call or whatever, but there's default functionality built into the browser to handle most of these common things like clicks. So span ID trick link will spawn a click event, what's called bubble up. So it'll 
it'll first see, is there a handler on span? No. Is there a handler on overlay? No. And now the issue here is because it goes up, it's actually going to miss the iframe. So our click event is not going through. Because it's not going through, we're not able to interact with that button no matter how often we click and how hard we click. So what we need to do is we actually need to go to the overlay and we need to say, uh, I believe pointer events, none. So we're actually just going to cancel out the default functionality for spawning this click event right here. We're going to click. It's still not working. Why is that? It's because the overlay is a div that contains tricklink. So we're going to also have to do that. on Now on tricklink, we do the same thing. We say pointer events done. And finally, all that default functionality should be out of the way. We click and of course, we're making the click event spawn on top of the button, which is inside of the iframe. And now we're able to invoke functionality. Finally, what we want to do is make the iframe invisible. So we're going to do opacity 0 0.0001. So we reload the page. And as you can see, unless, unless you're highlighting content, you're not going to notice that there is any content in the background. Still, we can click the link right here, invoke the function in the iframe. And depending on how we structure this web page, we can trick end users into clicking on our page, those clicks go through to the iframe and they are now invoking functionality on websites they don't tend to invoke functionality on. Let's talk about how this works in the wild. In 2008, one of the most prominent click checking attacks that ever occurred was against Adobe. Adobe had a web-based settings page that allowed you to change the privacy for your camera and microphone in your web browser. Now, someone created a JavaScript HTML CSS based game and as the user was clicking, on various parts of this game, unbeknownst to them, the elements they were supposed to click on were spawning in front of privacy radio buttons for Adobe. And so they were slowly, as they beat the game, they would set their privacy on their microphone and their camera via the uh, Adobe Flash plugin, I believe, to uh, allow the creator of the game to access their camera and microphone. This was a very significant exploit and affected a large number of users you know, ever since then, a lot of people think clickjacking is not as prominent on the web because there are ways of mitigating it. If you want to mitigate this, you need to go through and you need to implement CSP frame ancestors. Very easy mitigation, so it's very easy to fix and prevent. The problem is a lot of websites don't actually go through that effort, and as a result, these websites are vulnerable to clickjacking. So if you're a web developer, if you're some type of software engineer working on a web application, make sure to check all of your pages Make sure that you have CSP frame ancestors configured correctly. And thank you for watching this video.